the House comes to questions for oral answer. Question number one in the name of the Right Honourable Winston Peters. Order. They say timing is everything, Mr Speaker. This question is to the Prime Minister and asks... Order. Right Honourable Winston Peters, question number one. This question is to the Prime Minister. Is he committed to an open and transparent government on issues where New Zealand may soon be involved in conflict in the Middle East? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, as I have previously said, the Government is looking at a range of options to contribute to the International Coalition Against ISIL. Uh, ISIL is a brutal organisation which deserves the strongest of condemnation. Uh, it's my intention to be as open and transparent with New Zealanders as I can responsibly be about the issue of such a potential contribution. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, right hon. Winston Peters. Uh, why then has he delayed including the public in a, quotes, to use his words, mature conversation, end of quotes, about the Islamic State threat until after the election and indeed until this week. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, during the course of the election campaign there was a discussion uh, or questions were raised about ISIL and ISIS and I clearly remember making quite a number of comments. One of the problems was that uh, I was about the only person in the entire parliament that wanted to talk about, uh, about policy and issues of that matter. Certainly I don't remember that member being in the position. Supplementary question. What a supplementary question. Right Honourable Winston Peters. Given that in June he was given the public of this country his personal assurance that the government would not be involved, why has the government been selectively releasing information about the Islamic State threat rather than keeping the public fully informed on the nature of the threat it poses to New Zealand? On the right honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, firstly, the situation in Iraq is evolving, and I think all international, uh, all international uh, members of the international community would acknowledge that. Secondly, uh, tomorrow, as the members are probably aware, uh, it's my intention to give a major speech on the issue that I think will actually spell out for New Zealanders both the range of options available and uh, the a sense of the risk, both domestically, regionally and internationally. Finally, Mr Speaker, my understanding is that with agreement of the Business Committee, uh, there is going to be a ministerial statement in the House tomorrow by myself. There will be a wide-ranging debate. Uh, we've ensured that all political parties, even those that have um, less than six members, will be able to be part of that debate. And it's my expectation that New Zealanders, uh, from their lounge rooms to this Parliament, will want to debate what contribution of any that New Zealand might make. Uh, supplementary supplementary question. question, Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, what assurances can the Prime Minister give that New Zealand will not commit military forces to meeting the Islamic State threat unless there is United Nations sanction for military action? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, um, the first thing I'd say is uh, the member really will need to wait until he sees the speech tomorrow uh, and then he can uh, draw his own conclusions to that question. Uh, but secondly, Mr Speaker, in terms of the United Nations, uh, one area we are following that is the United Nations resolution in relation to foreign fighters is something we've been closely following and that's the very reason why the government is putting up some proposals which will be included in the speech tomorrow to address that issue and um, take the moment to thank the Labour Party who I understand are supporting it. And I hope that New Zealand's first will support it because they've had the same briefings uh, from officials as the Labour Party have. Supplementary question. A supplementary question, right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, given that answer, why would the New Zealand public not regard the Prime Minister's so-called mature conversation on the Islamic State issue as a smokescreen and window dressing when critical decisions have already been made by the government? Right, Honourable Prime Mr. Speaker. Minister. Mr Speaker, um, no, government, uh, no decisions have actually been made by the government yet, except for the ones in relation to humanitarian aid. We have previously uh, made contributions, I think, of up to $13.5 million. So no decisions have actually been made. Um, some decisions may well be made in the future, and when people get a chance to see my speech tomorrow, uh, they will decide that. But I simply uh, say to the member, that uh, uh, the issue here isn't about uh, whether we are trying to withhold information from the New Zealand public. The issue here is about protecting the New Zealand public from a threat that is credible both internationally, regionally and domestically. 
Uh, supplementary question. Supplementary question, right, Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, is it not true that Cabinet has already made a decision on this matter? And if it, it is true, what confidence can the public have that all the material decisions about New Zealand's role in relation to the international response to the Islamic State threat have not already been made by government? Right, Honourable Speaker, Prime Minister. Well, unless uh, the member is the 21st member of the National Party Cabinet, uh, then uh, he knows something I don't. But outside of that, no decisions have been made by Cabinet. Supplementary question, David Shearer. Uh, to the Prime Minister, given that he has stated that New any New Zealand deployment would be, quote, there for a reasonably significant period of time, what would he define as the exit point or the point at which they had finished their job? Uh, right, Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, well, firstly, I'd urge the member to closely look at the speech tomorrow and uh, have a better understanding when he sees that. Uh, secondly, the point I was simply making is that if you look at something like Afghanistan, in reality, when the Labor government committed New Zealand's uh, resources and forces to Afghanistan, uh, I'm not sure people would have thought it would have been for the 11 or 12 years that we ultimately stayed, uh, but that was the length of time required. And I think realistically, uh, whatever takes place in, in a country like Iraq is not something that's going to be uh, very short term. Now, whether that's two years, three years, four years, five years, I don't know. Uh, but if the members ask me whether uh, something was of the order of six months, uh, then I would say uh, if that decision was made, then it would be no. Question number two, Jamie Lee Ross. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Finance.